During the mid to late 1800s and into the early 1900s, Ashland, Ohio winters were cold and blustery. This led to many epic snowstorms and people took advantage of the cold and snowy climate. In the mid-1800s, people enjoyed many of the winter's activities that we enjoy today. We begin with an account of ice skating in the 1850s as told by Belle Wiest Mansfield, who was an Ashland resident and historian from 1856 to 1912. She was married to Samuel Bates Wiest, who was a leading druggist in Ashland, Ohio for many years. Our first story is of the Town Creek, which runs directly south of Main Street. It seems so insignificant to us today, but it was once the centerpiece of much of the town's activity. Ice skating was one of the most popular activities in 1855, and it was reserved for boys and young men. During this time, the creek was always frozen in the winter, and people could skate from the west end of the creek, located today near Brookside Park, to three miles east of town. The Ilger family owned property in downtown Ashland, and the creek flowed near the southern end of their lot. The terrain was low in this area, and it created a large area of ice, which was good for skating. During the winter, swarms of boys would strap on their skates and have races or perform ice skating tricks. One day, Clara Ilger asked her mother, The boys seem to be having so much fun. Would it be proper for me to try on my brother's skates and try? After trying on her brother's skates and taking a few turns around the icy pond, it was not long before all the girls around the creek also took up ice skating. In 1861, ice skating was so popular that Mr. McIlvain opened his farm pond to skaters. McIlvain was a molder by trade but served the Ashland community with his fruit and ice business for 25 years in the mid-1800s. The McIlvain Farm was in the vicinity of Morgan Avenue and Samaritan Avenue, near where University Hospital stands today. An 1880s map of the area shows a rectangular space of 16 acres labeled McIlvain. On it were two small rectangular features marked Home and Ice House, with an additional five rows of markings to indicate an orchard. If you read Hill's 1880 Ashland County history, you'll find that Mr. McIlvain's ice house was 60 feet by 36 feet. We were told not to spit on the ice because it would later be harvested. I had a pair of clamp-on ice skates, and we looked forward to the band who played there every Saturday night. In the spring, our group of boys would catch frogs in that same pond said Charles Freer, a native of Ashland. Today you can see many different types of ice skates, many of which are over 130 years old and housed right here at the Ashland County Historical Society. They all look very primitive compared to the skates of today. After this, skating in the winter became so popular that another ice rink was opened in 1867 on the southwest corner of Bank Street, which is now called College Avenue. The rink covered an acre of ground, and there was a small house on the northeast corner where skaters could get warm and adjust their skates. During special occasions, the Ashland Band was hired to play. This was told by Bell Wiest Mansfield. In later years, there were many places to skate in Ashland, and most of them were at Brookside Park. Many people remember skating on the duck pond just off of Lindale Avenue. Some people remember skating on the frozen swimming pool parking lot, while others have fond memories of the flooded t-ball field on the corner of East Main and Parkside Drive. It was fun to take your bag of marshmallows and your thermos of hot chocolate to the ice rink, and many good times and good friends were made sitting around the warming fire. Another famous winter activity was sled riding. Mrs. Wiest Mansfield also tells about sledding in 1877. That winter was particularly cold and snowy. A new street had just opened running from Pleasant Street to Church Street. Today, this street runs just north of St. Edward's Catholic Church. The grade on this new street was perfect for sled riding, and many of the young people congregated on this hill every evening, sometimes until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. The sleds would go way beyond the end of the street 
and would end up over on the railroad switch tracks. Some of the boys took two sleds and mounted a long board between them. This created a type of coaster which could be loaded up with many boys and girls to create an exhilarating ride down the street. The Ashland Press reported in January of 1897 that a bobsledding party was held at the home of Sam Grable. Mr. Grable's farm was located just south of where the Ashland County Career Center stands today. Mr. Grable went on to found the Star Telephone Company and built the large white house that you see on Center Street that is directly across from the Historical Society campus. Young people were invited to the farm south of town on State Route 60, and the evening's activities included dancing, cards, mock trials, and a banquet for all the guests, as well as sled riding. In its day, Claremont Avenue was also a popular place for sled riding. Residents would block off the street and the neighborhood children could enjoy a long ride down the hill. This all came to an end when a young boy hit the trolley at the bottom of the hill and was killed. This event happened sometime after 1909 when the trolley still traveled down Main Street. Of course, other places around Ashland provided great sledding also. Many people remember the hill on hole number nine at the Country Club of Ashland. This steep hill provided a long ride with lots of bumps and bounces along the way. Sleds, toboggans, and inner tubes were popular ways of getting to the bottom. Unfortunately, the walk to the top was so steep so that after about nine or ten trips down the hill, most people were done. If you would like to investigate more about life in Ashland County, come and see us at the Ashland County Historical Society, 420 Center Street, Ashland, Ohio. Our building and grounds provide something interesting for young and old. Visit our website to learn about our hours of operation, upcoming events, and special speakers at www.ashlandhistory.org. We invite you to come and be a part of history.